is our first game with Gamer Richie doing the analysis, top 100 Grandmaster in Europe. And the first replay we've got in is from No Free Will. He says he plays Zerg, a Masters free, and Richie's going to tell him how he's going to get to Grandmaster. All right, take it away, Richie. Okay, guys, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Gamer Richie. As uh, Garzi's just mentioned, um, top 100 GM, and I'm here to help you guys improve and sort of fast track your learning. Now, before we get into the game, you're a Zerg player. You should be using uh, the terrain and the map to your advantage. So already in this map, we can see as a Zerg player, if you just go to the natural and the third, that long distance. So you have to be aware that if your opponent does any sort of aggression, it's going to be hard for you to react unless we get that creek thread going nice and early. You just have to put that into the back of your mind. On very small maps, what you want to do is you want to go for a 15 hatchery to stop the probe really from denying it. Whether or not this opponent does it, it's very good to get into that standard. If not, you can go pull first to play very, very safely. So let's have a look at um, what no free will does in this game and how effective he can be. But please do note that the terrain will help. The terrain, you need to look at where your third base and your fourth bases are going to be placed. And how you're going to approach that first of all. Okay. Uh, also ping for me, Richie, so I can follow too. All okay, right. sure, not a problem. You might be able to... Oh, no, you can't go on my camera on here. So third bases or fourth bases, you just need to know where you're going to be expanding. Love so it. this is your natural third. That's your unnatural third. That is just... Yeah, that's just ridiculous. So you need to make sure that you get that set up straight away when you're in the game. So our opponent, we can see, he's going for a wall off. And in ZVP, they have to wall off the low ground, otherwise they lose to just mass lings. So we see that with the first overlord. The first overlord's going that, and the second overlord's playing very safe on the natural. And we can see here, we've got the expansion, we've got the pull. This is looking very, very good. So with this first overlord, it's very important to, as soon as you scout the cybernetics core and the gateway, you want to note a couple of things but we'll wait until the Overlord gets over the other side of the map. So we're going for the really, really early third base. So this is advantageous and dis well, in, in this can create a disadvantage as well. So you're playing extremely greedy. Does your opponent have vision of that? Does you, do you know the, the vision that your opponent has? That's very important. He's got lack of scouting, so he's not going to be able to make an informed decision seeing this, la well, seeing this third base so quickly. Normally, when you're a Protoss, you want to keep your probe in the main base to try and make sure that when he does make lings, that there isn't a drone going for an early third. Because this Protoss can simply just do uh, a lot of aggression early on with two gateways or, or you know, get in between your bases. So that, that's what your aim would be as a Protoss. As a Zerg player, you're doing quite well, but you just need to know what um, information your opponent has on you at this point in time. But all in all... A very solid start at the moment. Alright, let's see what happens here. I'm, I'm just going to say Protoss is a bit OP. Not happy about <laughs> them. So, let's see what he does. Probably an Immortal all in. That's what I'm guessing. Alright, okay. Overlord. So, this is very important here. Um, what we see with the first Overlord. We see that he's cronering out his gateway. Um, we can see from the replay that he's got little to no vision. But what's also important is the warp gate is being researched on the cybernetics core. That is huge information. That's 50 gas that he's not saving. So that normally means he's going to be going for a robo or a twilight. Now, the reason why I say that, guys, is if you go for an oracle or a stargate, after you go for warp gate, it's really, really, it's quite, quite late. It shouldn't be that late. Normally, when they rush for stargate, you see the lack of the research from the warp gate early on. You also see a chrono of the gateway. That's very important because now you know he's not chrono in probes. Why is he not chrono in probes? And this is where you start to get more of an informed decision on how you want to approach the game. There we go. So we see that he's opening up a sentry. Another great piece of information here. So he's trying to deny vision as well as having a good wall. Seeing this sentry early on, he spent, how much does a sentry cost? Click on the uh, gateway, 100 gas early on. That is your tech building he's got in a unit. So any tech building that he's going to be making at this time is going to be rather late. And you can see that because he hasn't even got it in the replay. 
So already your opponent is playing very defensive for no reason. What do you think about this forge? Forge just means that he wants to go for an upgrade, maybe an early plus one, but without the tech building, he can't do any aggression. Okay. So this Zerg is free to drone. So what we're going to have a look at, mainly in this game, is how much lava is left, what vision that does no free will have, and whether he uses that to his advantage. We've got random overlord here. I'd really like that over here. Or if we could sneak it up on this high ground. Something. Because we can't scout with this overlord that's uh, here. Unless you want to lose it, you're happy with that. But seeing the sentry, you know where most of the gas has gone early on. So when speed is done, we want to be able to take the map. So let's have a look. So I'm trying to review this as in-depth as, as I can, but also as simply as I can. So do we see that robo with that um, overlord? No, we don't. So we don't even know our opponent's got a full wall off or not. So that's very important because you need to know. In fact, is that a full wall off? I don't think that's even a full wall off. I think, is that, that's one hex? Is that one hex? That, I reckon Zerglings can get around that edit or even kill that edit. Potentially. I'm not too sure. I can't really see it properly. It Sometimes it's deceiving. So the hallucination, all the Protoss wants to do is scout what you're doing, but he's doing like a... I, I don't even know what build this is, quite honest. He's not using his forges. Um... <laughs> I'm very confused here, very, very confused. But let's have a look at the Zerg part. Let's have a look at the work account. So around about four minutes, we should be two base saturated. You're able to achieve that 30 seconds before. This is what you can look at, Garzi, and go, oh, you know, this is this is the next stage. So he, he saturated his two bases in terms of the minerals at three minutes 30. That's really good. Okay. That's pretty good, yeah. Like so when he saturated his two bases... As a Zerg player, or at any level, you want to then go, right, can I saturate a third? Because right now, what important upgrades starting to finish? It's the speed link. So do we commit to mass speed link, or do we commit into, into drones? That's the decision making here for any sort of level sort of below master. That's where you make the decision. But you can already see there's a photon cannon um, that's in the natural. Uh, and he's spending minerals on defense. So do we want to attack into him? Probably not. Can we rush into a tech? Absolutely. So seeing this cannon, seeing these these minerals being put into the vent, you could easily just go, oh, well, a cannon can't move the other side of the map. That's one less gateway. So what you would then be doing is, right, droning, 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 and rushing up that tech. So we're making sure when we get that third base down, we're going back into gas. At this so we... stage, should the probe count be similar to the drone count? That's fine. It, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Normally they're similar. Yeah. Okay. It looks like that. But this is where scout as well. This is what's quite important about this timing that I stopped is because this is where we should be starting to push forward. So we've got three random lava here. We're not spending them into into drones here. Still three lava. We would be forty four workers. You know, we we'll be a lot ahead now. We're making three queens. We're we're going on to gas a little bit a little bit later. We got. We've got lack of queens. No, we haven't got lack of queens. He's making extra queens because obviously the extra resources he's got. He's now saturated the third base a little bit. Sees the lack. Sees the lack of the third base. That should be a little bit of a trigger there. Lack of a third base, Kenan. When behind. What's what's the phrase, Garcy? When behind Dark Shrine, baby. When behind Dark Shrine. That's a that's a good one. Oh yeah. That's normal. It. But how does he so, know he, how does he know he's behind already? Is it because he saw the third base? The Protoss so saw the third So the reason base. why you can know that a Protoss is very much behind is because their inefficient uh, ability to spend on what's important and what's not. He's got a, a, a sentry which has served no purpose mm. but to send a phoenix across the map. Yeah. We now have lair started. So the lair's going to be finished before the Dark Shrine, which is an okay time. He could have taken his guesses a little bit earlier. But to be quite honest, I'm very happy with the position he's in. This Overlord, look, have a look at the vision this Overlord's been able to get throughout the entire game. Absolutely the nothing. The first one or the second one? The second one. First one. The first second one. one's very really crucial at this point. But the first Overlord, he scouted the warp gate side of next call. He could have pushed in a little bit, had a look at the sentry and go, oh, what is he walling off with? Is he taking the gases? So we're already at four minutes into this game and he's saturated up. Um, two bases, and he should be sort of mainly saturating the third. He needs that information, so sack an overlord. Have a look. What's going on? Send a speedling the other side of the map to go to the wall. 
He's got speed link done. So what you should be doing, free will, is gaining this information. Send a link across the map. Either side. Link there. Link there. You'll be able to see the warp prism come across the map. Now, you're confused at this guy's build order. I'm confused at this guy's build order. Everybody in their right mind is confused at whatever this guy's doing. But you haven't got the information to make a good decision. What you've got is, you can see his natural. You see no tech building. You see no third. You're playing a guessing game. We'll, we'll You're see playing if the Lord now goes in, but is it too late to know now? He should be, or he should have already known. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Well, he should, he should have an idea of what's going on. Now he's in. So he comes in, and now he sees the dark shroud. This is perfect. Yeah. Now he knows his opponent is on two bases, so seeing this dark shroud, he should be coming out with this overlord, and he should be stopping the drone production, which is what he's exactly doing and going to Zerglings. Now we need a unit, an extra unit to defend with the Zerglin. So it wouldn't be so bad to say, right, we maybe need roaches in this instance. We maybe need something. Can we get into the Hydra? Can we get Hydra lists out before the DTs? Or the Archons? Probably not. No. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? He's taking his gases um, a little bit too late. So when you grab the uh, lair, I think, did he, when he grabbed his lair? Let's have a look when he grabbed his gases. It should be almost instant when he grabs the extra gases. Let's have a look. So, layer two gases. Let's have a look. It's a really late. It's really late back on this gas, but um, he's probably looking from a specific build order somewhere. So, layer is layer, layer is here. Yeah, I think Come it on. starts as soon as the queen. Yeah, the queen. Good, comes good. Out, there we go. Starts. Good. And then two gases. Okay. All right. So we're not doing too bad. So seeing maybe the lack of third may may be the trigger for you. To go into roaches. Yeah. Something quicker than the hydras. Lings are out on the field now as well. Look at that. He's already doing it just after a set. This is brilliant. So he knows what he's going. DT shrine. He's got the three bases set trade. So no more drones. He don't need to make any more drones because he's got three bases. So let's have a look what goes on here. Why is his lings in an aggressive position? Oh. Okay. So he's now going for a third base. Well, that's weird. All right. <laughs> so he now... So, okay, this is uh, this is a really weird game. So we need vision of that, okay? Another link. Send it up the top. See wherever he's going for a third. We're still ahead in terms of our... Well, have we saturated base fully here? We've he's got a lack of drones. Behind. We've got 41. Behind on workers. How are we behind? We've yeah. made so many links. Okay. All right. I guess maybe he was scared of the, the all-in potential, maybe? Mm. Mm. He's... Well, when you grab the two extra gases and you've mainly saturated... Okay, so he's focused a lot on the minerals here. He's made a lot of buildings, so that could probably be the reason why. And he just needs to drone back up to, to get back ahead. Oh, that's why. Yeah, because you use drones to... Yeah. There's a bit of a thick moment from Gamer Richie. You use drones. You lose drones when you build stuff. So he should be back ahead soon. Or, or, or around about even. So you see he got, he's got a third here. Yeah, he's even now, yeah. So right now you see the intention... To take that third base. Yep. That's what it looks like he wants to do. So even if you'd have started the roach run because it's only minerals, probably let it finish. You could probably even go to a, like a three base roach push. But now we're starting to get into a next stage of a game of, right, we've got the hydro list then. We've got three gases. Probably need a fourth when this, this um, mineral line saturated. We've got two extra lava. Let's have a look at what's going on. So we're going to try and deny a little bit of this third. You could literally attack the right-hand side of the third base to force the adepts out. I don't know where the... This guy's got nothing. At... He really doesn't have much. He, yeah, he doesn't know. He doesn't. Let's have a look at where the warp prism goes, because I miss the warp prism. So the warp prism is... Let's see. I think it... Does he pick up the... He picks up the immortal. It's flying across Okay, the... this is interesting. Here we go. Queen's already there. Does no damage. Does no damage. This is brilliant. And this makes sense because that's why he's making drones at this point. I was wondering why he was making drones at that point. Brilliant. So he's defended that push. He roughly sees up with the Zerglin. And look, now he wants to come and defend. We're now even still in workers. We're going for the fourth base. This actually looks rather logical. The only unfortunate thing is we don't have any upgrades. So we need to try and fit some upgrades in here somewhere. The, the speed the speed of the droning needs to improve, even though you've done well to drone at this time. The droning needs to be quicker. Don't do it in sections. The, so there's a, a good GM player called Neuro, um, Neuro Sarkraft. He's probably very familiar with him. 
He he makes drones in sections. You should be making drones fluently. If you're not making drones, you're making links. If you're not making links, you're making overlord, and so on and so forth. So the creek spread is looking good. We've got so good map map control. Now, yeah. These links should be back at home. And now we should be trying to at least going into our sort of later game. So we've got the lair. So drop the infestation pit, get the upgrades, start going Ling Bane Hydra. At the moment, we've got the Bane in this now. We haven't thought about going for the Bane in this before. And our opponent's now going for Cyanic Storm. The opponent that you're playing, if we have a look right now, in terms of his units lost, uh, let's have a look. Units lost, zero. Um, he's playing very defensive. His mechanics are okay, not too bad, because he's saving up all this gas. He's done a good good job in terms of forcing you to make a lot of units without moving across the map with anything. We've got a lot of lings not doing much here. We've got lack of upgrades at this point. So normally the, the Zerg and Protoss have similar upgrades, but if we can sneak something in, we need just a heavy hitting unit here. So we need to go into the infestation pit. Still max out of Ling Bane Hydra. But then you can take all the gases, do exactly what you're doing here, but then slowly going up into Broodlords or something. This guy's already preparing for that. He's going for an extra Stargate already in preparation for the Broodlords. So your opponent, for some reason or somehow, is gaining no information at all. The only information he's gaining from is from this Phoenix here to start scouting around. This is a very weird game. Because no no free real is actually doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. So let's have a look at the overall um Okay. So he sees the sees the main base here, he sees control as well. He sees everything. So he's got fourth bases almost saturated. Let's have a look at the army count. So he's at seventy two, normally you want about eighty, which is why he's going for nine more drones. So that is going to be his maximum count here. Yeah. That's going to be his optimum. Yeah. So with this creep spread, he can then push out further. He's trying to play into the late game. So in terms of in in terms of insight's sort of hands he's playing into because insight wants to get the storm. But let's have a look at the supplies here. Now, as a Zerg player, you're thinking you've probably already won the game here. As everybody's playing, you're like, oh yeah, you're winning. No, you're not. Protoss are quality units. Each unit they have costs a lot of money. Your lings don't cost a lot of money. Your hydras cost a little bit of money. So your hydras cost 100 minerals and 50 gas. So they won't do as much damage as a high templar that costs. And if you click on the gateway and you look over the high templar, 50 minerals and 150 gas. So right now we need to make a good, a good decision on what, what does he have if he knows he's gone for high templars, what can count high templars? There are many, many things that we could do here because we're so very far ahead. So as long as we get the infestation pit, we can do that. Let's have a look. Does he have the infestation pit? I can't see it. Let's have a look here. Structures. No, he doesn't. No infestation so, pit. So you can see he's already trying to gain information. And this is good. He does the baning drops. Oh, he does so he can now... Correct. So if we go back, there's 16 workers killed. I think I've rewinded way too far here. So this is good, baning drops. So he's doing all, all the all the good uh, all the good moves here. So let's go back to where the overlords come in. This is brilliant. So with a turtle in play, you want to try and do damage. You can see it on the north side here. You should be able to see some banings there as well. There we go. So let's look how much damage this does so that we can uh, at least give this guy some credit. Kills a lot of units here. Kills a lot of units there. Now, he knows he's done a little bit of damage. If we then have a look at the income, he is much further ahead. So this is a point of where we're like, right, we've got more mineral income than our opponent. So we should be making a lot of units and trying to trade somewhere if we can. Getting a big long... So we should be trying to kill rocks. We should be getting prepared for a fight right now. Getting a changeling, sending a ling to his army. Check his upgrades. Is he ahead in upgrades? Is he behind? There's no information of where the army is, only when he comes to here. So we need a good engagement. We can already see that he's already gone for the photon cannons. So are we going to be going in with another group of banings on this side? And are we going to be using another bane drop? You can already tell baning drops are something that this guy hasn't really thought about or he's not cannot react to. Yeah. We've got big army here. here comes the, push. The, the big army is in an aggressive position and he's not seen 
as far as we know, where the army is at, at this point in time. So this is great harassment. This is brilliant harassment. Under attack. So now we're going for the spire. Now we're going for the, the hive. Arguably that could have been um, on the way. We've got 34 lava that we haven't used to max out right now. So we could be maxed out versus this, but we're not. We're doing loads of harassment. So this is good harassment. But the harassment's not very good if you can't produce anything behind it. So your opponent's now going, oh, well, that's less banelins in your fight. So now we're making some more zerglings, which arguably we should be making as anything we can at this point. This is a good harassment up here. Banelins coming in. Oh, uses one storm. We should be trying to get... Oh, this is a brilliant run by... Actually forces the pickup of these units. As soon as we see that, we should be looking to clear up these units. Look, we can jump on these oh, units. These get away. He could be losing yeah. those units right there. Yeah. This is great harassment. Oh, but we're not capitalizing on anything. However, we are getting harassed at the same time. So this guy's just working you very, very hard, which is all that he's doing. We're now not making any more bailings. We're making bailings as he's coming across the map. He loses the warp prism. Oh. And now it's going to be a fight of concaves. And how many high templars? Four high templars here. So that's going to be four lots of units. He's allowing you to make bailings, which I wouldn't do. We should be making more units here. We should be making something. What? Twenty-three lava, hydra, something. What do you think about this random oracle? So the infestation pit was really, really late here as well. The infestation pit would help him. The oracle helps him for vision. He gets to see whether there's brood lords he's attacking into or where the rough location of his army is. And he makes seven corruptors. What are the corruptors going to do at this point versus this army? Yeah. Maybe if he slowly gets into brood lords. Maybe if his opponent allows him. But if his opponent just simply morph, oh, makes loads more um, zealots and just attacks, he's got a chance to win the game. He should be getting ready. He should be getting some Banins here, some Hydras here. He knows the position of his army. But he's choosing to do all of these runbys when he could be trying to get this army surrounded here. Do we have the upgrades on the Hydras? Yep. Actually kills everything there. Actually kills everything. So the advantage now from the Zerg... Can we run that back? I want to see that again. In, in correct. Time. So, he's jumping on. Okay, he feels like this is the time to attack. Do you think this is a good attack here? Mm. He, should, he should be trying to get the attention of his opponent by doing something and then jumping onto his yeah, army. Okay. It looks like he has to go infestors as well. Exactly. So, it's a bit of uncertainty. Right now, we shouldn't be thinking... Oh, we're going to be making this unit. We should already have it in our mind. So that's why the infest. That's why I said the infestation pit is rather late. Now, where can you fit that in? Well, I'll tell you where you can fit that in when we get in, when we uh, rewind back. But we're just going to have a look at the outcome of the game first. So we've got loads of units coming around the side. He spread out his army well. So as soon as this comes in, and this attacks the cannon, I want you to have a look at the opponent's army. What is what is Insight looking at right now? Yeah, he's looking away. Completely looking Let's have away. a look at the engagement. Good opportunity here to try and at least jump in. But now, insights come in. He gets surrounded. Not a lot of hydras here. You can see a lack of hydras. That's because they're all in the main base. So he wasn't able to have all of his units together. So lack of I guess, really... I guess the important thing is he kept all his immortals and archons. Correct. So now, if he holds this until Broodlords, he could win the game. That's could. a big warp in. Huge warp in. Just of zealots as well. Just of zealots. It's not very, you know, it's not very uh, difficult here, but he's trading okay. Good, I um... Oh, I don't know good, about the good here. He's, he's trying to hold out until the Broodlord's here. Yeah. And now he's and now he's trying to now um, another warp in. Sort of get get back into the game here. We've lost a lot of resources. Have a look at the workers. Kill count twenty three to four, and we still got seventy seven workers. Where are the workers? Where are most of the workers? Oh, he's twenty four. Into carriers and charge wasn't done. I think charge was a big thing here. Yeah, charge wasn't done. Yeah, that doesn't matter really, because this this game was lost way before that. So, we've got Broodlords, 
We're going to try and attack into this. This is where we should. This is a good fight. This is a good fight. Because these broodlords should just slowly chip away all of the army here. There's nothing to battle them. So we should be attacking onto this, jumping onto it. Brilliant. This is fantastic. Maxing out with lings as well and pushing forward now. This is it. This is the game. This is the game. Right here. This should be over. We should be moving across the map. We should be moving across the map. Moving across the map. That's what we should going. be doing right now. Slowly going. Moving across the map. We could have been already across the map. Because the Broodlords are really slow to engage. So this should be over here because he's got not really much to defend it. Should be engaging with the Broods. Great. Um, that was a great fungal there, which is good. It's killing all the bases. As far as I'm concerned, it's probably over here. He sees the carrier, so behind this, he should be making nothing but corruptors so that he can eventually kill them or more infestors so that he can neural parasite. And he should be running lings everywhere. We should be getting the ling, ling upgrade. One minute. All right. All right, we back. Sorry, mate. Let's carry on. All the neural parasites and the uh, This game is basically over now, isn't it? Yeah. This game was over as soon as he had the broodlords and he was able to attack. But the reason why it made it really difficult is because the lack of the infestation pit time. And let's have a look at the production throughout the game. So it makes sense to what he's scouted. So I'm unsure of why this player wants us to review this replay when he's won it. And it's won it, not clearly, maybe that's probably the reason why, but he, he still won. One, he sent one where he lost, but he didn't tell me which one was the win and which one was the loss, so... Okay, sure, sure. I guess the other one's a loss. So this really, this really, keeping with the flow of making workers, with the flow of making workers, trying to be as greedy as possible, and only reacting until your opponent moves out, basically. That's what he wants to be doing. So he grabs, he grabs, he goes from having no gases to then having a ridiculous amount of gases very quickly. So he should really try to be steady in that out a bit. He's got two drones in the natural that he needs to be putting into other bases. These are really small things. And his aim should be maxing out. He's got 17 lava here. 22 lava here. So he should be making stuff. There we go. Makes Make a lot of lava. Just looking at the lava itself, he can max out. And there's no intention to max out here. He's doing too much aggression, which is probably why in the games that he loses, I guarantee you he's doing more harassment and dies to the guy just going, right, I'm just going to push. Yeah. He shouldn't be allowing his opponent to get to here. He should have a ling here. And then as soon as his opponent moves out, he can move all of his army over here, kill his base. The opponent has to come back because he can't win a base race. You don't have to engage the Protoss army. You can play another way. That's just another way that he can approach the game. So when he sees this army here... He could put a change in there, and he could have another army here, or half his army there attacking there. And have all of his army here, or all of his army getting ready to attack to the natural. He doesn't have to attack into all these storms. But unfortunately for Insight, he got caught off guard. Um, he got surrounded. He, he, as a Zerg player, you don't want to give up this sort of area. You want as big area as possible, yeah. so that you can attack. So the storm does less damage. The harassment was good. Um, it done a lot of damage, it got him ahead. Um, the infestation pit, I would argue, is a little bit late, which is why the hive's now extremely late. Um, we can get hive really, really quick in games. Um, and yeah, overall, good game. However, we should be trying to get a little bit more vision of where the army is. He knows the army is here somewhere. And I don't know whether he can see it on, on his creep. Can he see it on his creep? No, he can't see it on his creep. So he knows it's like around. So and then he sees it with all those links. Loses a couple of links, shouldn't need it to. But um, yeah, should be enticing this army forward with some units, of course. But uh, to make this game a little bit easier, is he can always continually remax when he's done that much um, worker damage, when his opponent can't. So he should be looking just for good fights. And you can see him trying to split off Balin's here. Do you know what would be even better as well? Is if he had. Um, Overlords as well dotted just around it takes a little bit more APM here, but this is what nurture does He puts them into overlord drops. So as he attacks he puts balings in overlord drops and Even when the opponent force fields he drops all the balings on the um, high templars oh, like So that, that could be that could be an idea that he could do because he's already invested I think into um, Overlord speed with the drops. Yeah All right, awesome Well, that's the first episode